this time. Join us as we cruise the most beautiful waterway I have ever had the pleasure to cruise. We are treated to beautiful scenery, beautiful sunrises, beautiful sunsets and... Oh, did I mention beautiful? It is just a treat. Having passed through Godstow Lock on the Thames bordering Oxford, we're headed towards King's Lock. The sun is shining and the water's still. Come on Val, no time for a tea break. There's work to do. No locky here it seems, so I go to help. Lock keeper on duty. Maybe they were having a tea break too. There's another boat just pulled up astern. So, we get to share the lock. Val pulls us in so the other boats can pull alongside. <laughs> Having had a good chinwag with a guy on board, we exit the lock. Duke's Cut on the right, another access point to the Oxford Canal. We're heading to port while our new friends from the lock are heading to their mooring at Thrupp on the Oxford Canal. I have to say that we received a lot of really wonderful heartfelt comments on the last vlog. Thank you so much to all of you. It is much appreciated by us both. Passing under Swinford Bridge. This was privately owned by the Earl of Abingdon, but auctioned for over a million quid in 2009. A toll for vehicles is still payable and it's estimated 10,000 vehicles a day cross over. It's a hot evening and what better way to cool off than taking a dip in the river like this woman. Meanwhile, we're on the lookout for a good mooring. Boat moored, we sit and watch the sun colour the sky on another perfect day. The following morning, we wanted to be away sharpish. Obviously, we weren't up as early as these guys. All we can do is wait. And wait. And wait. But what's the hurry? This is boat life. Underway again and there's some locking to do. A locky explained that it's best to open the paddles halfway on both sides. These locks though are much kinder than those on the K&A. Flow. I was about to start. It's a beautiful day. It's a fabulous day. 
wonderful stretch of river isn't it it's just beautiful um, we were a bit late setting off this morning actually well later than we wanted to because there was a, a swimming event going on between Farmore and Godstow which is about four and a half miles it's quite a long way to swim I couldn't do it I certainly couldn't do it I'd be able to run it but certainly wouldn't be able to swim it no well I couldn't even run it either so we might not be able to do quite as many miles today as we were anticipating um, so we actually finished quite late last night and we were pretty exhausted mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we did 14 and a half miles yesterday though, which was pretty good, and 19 miles the day before, and I think that's a record for me. Um, the long days cruising, but they are lovely. They're absolutely beautiful. I mean, and, and actually this is, we've both said it, this is kind of like being on holiday, being on the Thames, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, most, of the, most of the locks are manned, so we don't have to really do the locks. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's just something about it, isn't it? Well, also, we're not doing the normal stuff that we do. Um, the sort of, I know we're doing the, the, the YouTube video, but we're not doing other stuff, are we? So, yeah, we're yeah, spending the whole day cruising, yeah. which it makes a difference. Yeah, so. I mean, you know, but we're, it's we're not beautiful. going out shopping and stuff. Because actually, you know, I had no idea the River Thames was, was quite so rural. I mean, that's, well, we'd hardly ever pass through villages or towns, which which I find absolutely bizarre, but there you go. Um, yeah, because we, we've been to Wingford and Abingdon, and obviously we've been through Oxford. There's just been nothing since, is yeah. there? It's amazing, absolutely amazing. But good. Yeah, absolutely fabulous. I love this. I love the Upper Thames, it was just gorgeous. No boats, no people, just tranquillity. Ah, boats and people. Not exactly Bristol Docks powerboat racing though, is it? Newbridge coming up. It is though, despite the name, 13th century and one of the oldest bridges crossing the Thames. Built by monks on the orders of King John. Also, a battle was fought here during the Civil War in 1644. Relatively peaceful now though, in spite of the pubs at either end of the bridge. It's a bit of a shame about the power lines, but people got to have power, I suppose. If they can afford it, that is.
Thames is actually 250 miles long and makes it the second longest river in the UK. Uh, the longest being the River Severn, which uh, obviously I've mentioned in a previous episode. This year though, there's been a real water shortage. I mean, we didn't get much rain in the spring and we've hardly had any rainfall at all. And um, the River Thames is actually a foot lower than it should be this time of year. We were talking to a, a, a fishing bailiff, wasn't it? A fishing bailiff the other night who said that it was uh, it was down by about a foot. I was reading recently that uh, because of the drought that we're, we're experiencing, the Thames Head, that is where the, the, the River Thames actually rises, um, has completely dried up and it's now five miles shorter than it uh, was previously. So that makes it 245 miles, not 250 <laughs> miles. But um, I'm sure the, uh, you know, once we get a bit of rainfall, the, the, uh, the Thames head will go back to, to its original position. Well, we hope so anyway. The River Thames is also known as the River Isis, but this is mainly above Oxford. Do you know why it's called the River Isis? I don't, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. I certainly am going to tell you, yes indeed, yeah, yeah. Um, the river was actually called the, the Tame for many years, uh, and then after the Roman occupation of Britain, they Latinised it to Temesis. And then some of it's now called the River Isis after Temes, Thames Asis, and, and some of it's called the Thames. There you go. Well done. Another fascinating fact. <laughs> when I get into the find of who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> You're not going on that, are you? Hard work this locking. The following morning, we're back underway on the final stretch to Lechlade. The swallows are drinking on the wing, the geese are getting out of the way, and the swan is getting a bit raggy. Plenty of aircraft landing around here too, with RAF Bryce Norton not that far away. We pulled into St John's Lock Landing. Or did we? This it seems is the overflow landing and there's no access to the lock from here. Under the bridge and the landing is on the left.
The Lockie is busy on his phone, but helps us through. Oh, and who's this off to the left? Yes, it's old Father Thames himself. I mentioned him two vlogs ago. Val jumps back on board and the Lockie's son is grafting like a good one. Cheers, Bonnie lad. Lechlade coming up. Plenty of mooring spots on the left. And the church bells announce our arrival dead on midday. I wanted to go to the head of the navigable Thames, which is at the Roundhouse. This was once where the Thames joined the Thames and Severn Canal, a 29 mile stretch of canal which used to link the River Severn with the River Thames, and is currently under restoration. Ah, the roundhouse comes into view, nearly there. Warning, very shallow water ahead, do not turn beyond this point. Looks like harder stern then. The water appeared fairly shallow on both banks, so I didn't think there was enough room to wind reverie. We reversed and kept on reversing, and eventually found somewhere wide enough to turn. Well, we made it to Lechlade on Thames. Took three days from Reading? Three That's days correct. from Reading, um, which was pretty hefty going, but hey, it's been just <laughs> wonderful, hasn't it? Um, Absolutely. Um, I think as we said earlier on, it's just been, it's been like being on holiday. It's yeah. just, and... Um, and getting to Lechlade, and the whole journey has been unexpectedly brilliant. It's been fantastic, hasn't it? And you know, Lechlade is a very typical Cotswold town, really. So, um, or village is it? I think it's a village more than a town, isn't it? Um, yeah, but yeah, just the whole river trip has just been absolutely gorgeous. So, so pleased we made the trip. I think one point I would make is that uh, according to Nicholson's guide, uh, you can head about half a mile past the village and wind just behind the footbridge there. We tried to do this and it wasn't possible. Nicholson Guide did say that you could wind a full length boat there and well I don't think that's possible to be honest so um, if you're coming up this way I would be warned about that and uh, try winding the boat before you actually get anywhere near the footbridge. Mm. Um, he did well there about turning this round. Thank you. Okay good and um, yeah, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time, hopefully. Take care.